İslam'da hırsızın elini kesmek farz mıdır? Is cutting a thief's hand fard religious duty in Islam? You know, of course, Muslim jurists read the Quranic verse um, on Qat'al Yad as uh, because it is it was mentioned in the Quran. They read it as part of the hudud crimes, and you know, hudud literally means things that God drew a boundary around, a had uh, a boundary around. So, for whatever reasons, and they argue that for whatever reasons, for reasons that human beings sometimes cannot come, uh, do not know, uh, God said, "Well, you know, here's." my law on this matter and made it very clear in text uh, but they also at the same time argued that uh on the basis of many things including the prophet's um, uh, hadith idra'u al-hudud bi that whenever the whatever the rights of god are concerned uh, doubt must always be interpreted against implementation not in favor of implementation and the argument that they always relied on is that this is because god can vindicate god's rights in the hereafter uh, but the state is obligated to vindicate human rights hukuk um, al and you know so the answer from classical Islam is yes, the the cutting the hands of a thief is part of Sharia law, but at the same time, Muslim jurists created so many obstacles of doubt that when you look in Islamic history, you find that it, the, this criminal punishment was rarely achieved. Uh, thieves were often imprisoned. Um, less common was flogged, um, but. Um, Contrary to popular perceptions, uh, uh, um, the Islamic civilization was not known for brutal criminal penalties. Um, uh, I mean, I, it, the, the irony of everything is that the, the European civilization was far more brutal in its criminal penalties than the Islamic civilization. But, but I, I really do think that there, this matter needs to be reinterpreted and rethought um, because, um, you know, yes, we, we put obstacles like, you know, the theft cannot be due to hunger, it cannot be due to claim of right, it, it, it cannot, the theft have to be um, as to um, concealed property, the property cannot be out and open, there are all these things that would act as shubuhat that would prevent application. But I, I think there is, uh, it is possible to reinterpret uh, this Quranic text not to require, because in, in human consciousness evolves and changes. And, it, you know, um, I grew up, uh, I can tell you that what was acceptable to the psychology of a man or woman in the village in which I grew up in Egypt would be utterly shocking to someone who grew up in Cairo, in cosmopolitan Cairo. Now, this is in, in, in the same age, you know, the difference between uh, rural and urban. Uh, human psychology that was accustomed, they didn't have guns, they, they, they relied on knives and, you know, cutting as a fact of life. A child would see the chicken being prepared, you know, and the, the, the goats and the and the, the sheep and being prepared, to, you know, being slaughtered to, to be uh, prepared for meals. Uh, a, a child, most children would have to learn how to slaughter themselves in uh, the idea of seeing human flesh cut or severed or we didn't shock the conscience because that's the the the epistemology of the age the system of knowledge of the age things have changed and 
something like cutting the hand of the thief would shock the conscience today. And it, we no longer have a, a institutions of social welfare where someone can lose their hand and they have an entire family to take care of them, including uncles and cousins and neighbors and, you know, and the clan, the tribe. Today, you create a huge social liability if you cut someone's hand and you leave them incapable of, uh, of earning a living. Uh, basically, then the state will have to provide them for them for the rest of their lives. Um, in addition to repulsing people away from Allah's faith, because uh, people will their their their sensibilities is that this is barbaric and um, uh, and cruel, and it, it is. I don't believe that. Allah just revealed the Quran to to freeze the development of time to the period of the Prophet I believe that Allah coded the language of the Quran so that it speaks to every age. And when I read these same verses of the Quran today, I read I read Iqtau to mean be resolute show real resolve in in standing up to theft and when you and and you understand quite why because when you look at uh the difference between advanced countries and backwards countries today it's often corruption in in advanced countries even the irony is you know you you can you can rely on doing business and going to your job and there's less corruption but in backwards countries, corruption is so bad that it saps any real developmental potential for these countries. And then what Allah says in the Quran makes a lot of sense. You know, uh, be resolute. But does Allah want it to say, you know, you're limited to cutting off the hands? I, I, I don't think so. I think Allah is saying, you know, don't... Uh, don't be weak when it comes to making a stand against Sarqa, uh, because it is the undoing of your entire civilization, the undoing of your entire ummah. It is the undoing of your generations of people when Sarqa is so widespread around them. They, they lose heart, they lose hope, they lose faith. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's, uh, that's what I think.